Hey everybody, welcome in. Garbage time sports, Joe Shad, Clayton Rowe Mitty tonight. And Clayton, let's start with Team USA basketball here, just real quick. I know how this is going to sound, and I don't know if I'm blinded, blinded by my complete dislike for LeBron James, but I can't believe how much we are celebrating beating Serbia. I understand that we were down most of the game. I understand it was a great comeback. I understand that we were in a situation thinking that we might actually lose an Olympic basketball game. But if we lost to Nikola Jokic, who is the best player in the world, and Bogdanovich, none of those players on that team would have been able to live it down. So we can celebrate the deep breath and the sigh of relief, but the fact that people seem to be celebrating like, yeah, we're going to win gold. Of course we're going to win gold. This would have been an embarrassing loss. So it's okay to be excited about being saved from embarrassment, but I would like to completely disregard anybody who is actually excited, like, oh my gosh, what a great game. Can't believe we won. What are y'all talking about? Is LeBron James the GOAT or not? Is Steph Curry one of the best players of all time or not? Kevin Durant, is Anthony Edwards a beast or not? Like, if we have all these guys, why are we celebrating beating Serbia? And I know, I know how that sounds. I get it. I know how myself sounds. I can't get over it, though. I've been hearing about it for eight hours here before we record. Just what a win. Can't believe we did it. What a comeback. Oh, my gosh. Come on, guys. We beat Serbia. It's Serbia. They have two NBA players. Yes, I understand. I love Jokic. They have two NBA players. Clayton, any thoughts on that before we get to the real topic of the night? This game just proves two things. Number one, Jokic is the best player in the world, and it's not even close. Like the, he single, essentially single-handedly, you know, almost beat the entire U.S. team here with a completely stacked roster. Uh, I think the second thing it proves is that just because you have a bunch of stars on a team doesn't mean they're gonna play well together. And I'm not saying they played poorly by any means, but you look at a team that is centered around Jokic, it's, and the game plan is to get the ball to Jokic. And you look at the USA roster, and all these guys are used to being the main scorers on the field or on the court. So the expectation is that they all need to get their touches in. And that's why guys like Drew Holiday are so important, because they don't necessarily need, you know, 5, 10, 20 shots a game. They're satisfied playing their role and playing strong defensively. So overall, I think there is something to celebrate, because it was, I know we almost blew it, but there's also a pretty significant comeback there. And this is really the last chance at LeBron and KD and probably Curry. I think you're going to see a changing of the guard here from this roster. So this is their last go, and they are getting older. So th by no means is this prime Curry, prime LeBron, prime Kevin Durant. But at the same time, this team, the expectation is with the talent that they have, there is no doubt that they should be a gold medalist, and it shouldn't even be close. So, yeah, there's a little bit of concern, but... Honestly, I kind of felt it going into this tournament, too, with how USA's performed in the past. But, yeah, I mean, it's the Olympics. Anything can happen. And I really just want to drive home, though, that Jokic is, if anyone's ever doubted it for whatever reason, like, the doubt should be out the window. I mean, he, he's done this in the NBA, and they had, a, they had a solid team when they did their title run. But the reason the Nuggets are good is because Jokic is the strangest talent, I would say, in the NBA because uh, at face value, he just looks like an overweight, you know, big man who can't really do much. But when that dude gets on the court, he runs that team offensively and even anchors it defensively. You know, hats off to Serbia for competing. And if there was a team that – if USA couldn't win, how sweet would it be for Jokic, who should be the face of the NBA right now, to get that gold medal? So I'll it be looking for them in the bronze medal match here. Yeah, it would have been awesome for Jokic to get this done. He he controls every single thing on the court offensively for his team, whether it's the Nuggets or for Serbia. Everything goes through him. Everything is because of his passing ability, shooting ability, ability to go one-on-one -on -one when it's called for. He's amazing. I really love watching Jokic play. But yeah, and I understand from Team USA the sigh of relief factor, but the celebration... I can't get over it. I'm like, guys, what are we celebrating here? I I saw somebody, some respected guy, you know, on ESPN or whatever. He was just like, the the United States won even though Bogdanovich matched Steph Curry's boom night. 
And it's like, okay, what about Kevin Durant and LeBron and Embiid and AD, Anthony Edwards, Jason Tatum didn't even play, Devin Book, like, what about everybody else? Okay, so they had one guy match Steph Curry, great. What about the other nine all-stars we have on this team? Anyways, I yeah, digress. Even, even with Bogdan, Bogdanovich, though, like, he is the other option on Serbia, so it's obvious that he's going to get buckets because that's, that's their offense is Jokic and Bogdanovich. So there shouldn't be a question or a surprise around that for sure. No, I don't think so either, but I digress.